All right, gang. In this video, we're gonna set up the sidebar modal component that we can launch when we hit the create new item button. So let me give you a quick look on what that looks like. So currently we have this, the screen here, we've got this little button and we're gonna hit this. When you do that, animates in and closes, animates out, all right? So we're gonna add that. We're gonna be using view components. We're gonna be using some stimulus and we're gonna be following the great tutorial by our friend Avi and he's done something really cool, but we're gonna just change it slightly so that it fits our use case. Let's jump in. Okay, so we've got our layout over here. I'm gonna bump that up so you guys can all see it. But now we wanna be able to actually create new ideas, all right? So looking at this post here, we can see we're gonna create a new turbo frame tag that we can inject and it's gonna be called the slide over. And I might actually call this the a modal container uh, just because that's what we'll use for this for, basically. So let's grab that. We're gonna create a new turbo frame tag inside of our, we could even create that inside of our main content component, right? So underneath the content here, we're gonna create this and we're gonna say modal and then here, Let's think about what we call it in React world. I'm trying to think. So in React, we call it a portal. So what we're going to call here, I'm going to call it the modal portal, right? Now, if let's jump in here. So undefined method turbo frame tag. All right, so we need to get our helpers inside of these view components because otherwise we're going to have a real bad time. So I'm going to have a look at how we can do that. All right, so just looking at the docs, we can if we append helpers dot, that will give us the turbo frame tag there. And then if we jump into the source, we can see here turbo frame ID modal portal and turbo frame. All right. So that's what that's injecting there. All right. Let's keep moving. So the next piece is we're going to add to our button. We want to create a link to the new post form and we want to inject that into the position that we've just created. All right. So what we're going to do in our button component, we actually need the ability to now add a link. So with a button, usually we don't want to be using buttons for links. So let's see how we can do this. All right, so what we're going to do is inside of the button component, we're going to say here, we're going to add this an href, all right? So if it's a link, it will use an href, right? Like any other link. So I'm just going to tidy up this formatting now because it's getting a bit unwieldy. There we go, so we've got this. An href will be nil. And then we're going to have this here, right? So as default, we've got nothing on here. But if we go into now into our button component here, so we're going to say if um, href.present, right? So we're going to check that else and then end. All right. And then what we're going to do is we're going to just grab this button and chuck that in there duplicate it and put it up here. And then we're going to change this to an anchor. I just want to make sure. There we go. All right, button variant. Now we should, have, these things should look exactly the same now, right? So we've got an A and let's go and try this now. So what do we, we've got a syntax error. Where do we have a syntax error? Okay, the syntax error is just here. You can't have a trailing comma inside of that. That's it there. All right. So back to what we were doing. So let's go to our index page for our um, ideas. So we go here. So now button components. So now we're going to say href, right? And we're going to say this is going to be the new idea path. Okay. Now what we should see is this has changed to an anchor tag there. Okay. If we get rid of this, we just make this nil, right? And refresh. You can now see if we go back to the button, it's a button. Okay. So we're just handling that because, and the reason being is that you can't use, or you shouldn't use a button as an anchor, right? That's just bad usability. And you can see a bit about that here. It's when people say, how do I create a button that acts like an anchor, right? Um, there's a whole bunch of things here for accessibility, etc. but we won't get into that. We just know that if we get given a href, we want it to be an anchor, All right? So what this will do there is now we'll just say, when we have that, we're going to add it in. 
All right, so let's go and have a look at what that looks like. We should have now, you can see we even get the new cursor, it changes. You can see it links to ideas new, okay? Now, we need to go from there. We need to also go and add, if we have a look at our article, we've got a link to, we've got the path, then we've got a class, which is fine, but then we've got the data attributes, all right? So we want to be able to pass those through as well. So in our button co component, we want to say data. And we'll default that to an empty object. And here we're going to add that in and we're going to just say data, all right? So we pass that through there. Might even make it, let's just see what we can do here, data. Yep, so we've got data. And then in the button component here, we're just going to say data. So let's just see here. We might have to just change this. Might have to just change this. So have a look here because we need to now automatically append these things. So we need to basically do a data each and then render these out. All right, so let's try and change this to a Rails link to method. So we're going to go link to. And then this will be like that. And then we're going to go do. And here. Now, we need to put in this here. And then we need to also say, let's see, what else do we have? We need to link to, so we can say here the path. So this is the href. All right, let's just see if that even works. There's our idea. Okay, so that's good. And then we can say here class. So we can grab this whole thing. All right. And the reason I'm doing this is so that we can easily inject the data into it. So that should be exactly the same. I wonder why that's happening like that. Oh, it's because we're not we haven't appended the data yet. So that makes sense. Okay, so we've got that. All right, and then we're going to have the data here. So data will be for now. So that was actually right, Mr. Copilot. There we go. Doesn't like that trailing comma. And this probably needs a comma there. All right, stick that in there. There we go. We've got the same button now but we can also go dot merge right and then we're going to say data all right okay that's that now all right so now we've got this same button replicated here so we can get rid of this okay that's our link to component now so now we should be able to pass through data so if we have a look here we got button variant and button size, but now if we go into this guy, where is it? The index page. And we go in here and we say data. And we're going to say turbo frame. And this is going to be the modal portal. Okay. Let's have a look here. So you can now see here we've appended data, turbo frame, modal portal. Perfect. So now you can see when I hit new, something happened in here, right? We could see that change. If we refresh the page, you can see the modal portal's got nothing. We hit new, you can see that it changes down here. So it's working, all right? So it's doing what it needs to do. So let's just see what's going on in the form. So the form currently has nothing in it, but there should be, it should be somewhere here. It's probably down the bottom. There we go content missing all right so at the moment nothing's rendering but it is rendering something if that makes any sense okay so following along we've now have to look at this we have to now create this little slide over thing so i'm going to just copy this entire thing here and chuck it into the new what i'm going to do though is i'm going to create new underscore modal dot uh, actually, we can just leave new because it'll always be the same thing. So we're going to go bang that in there. There's the form. This is now going to be 
render form, but it is not a post. It is a idea. Idea. All right. Let's have a look. Does that work? Content missing. So we keep getting the content missing thing. So we're going to have to just have a look into that. Okay. So I just want to see. So why are we getting content missing? So that means something's going wrong here. So we click new. See, it's come. There is content coming in. So I'm just. I'm just. There, that's why the turbo frame ID is wrong. Okay, so here, this turbo frame idea, this needs to be changed to modal portal. All right, modal portal. I might even just call it to modal. And then this is just as where we're injecting this is modal portal. All right, let's give that a go. There we go. It's working. Awesome. All right, so now that we've got that working, let's, I want to extract a little bit of this stuff out. The key reason being because we have to now add a stimulus controller, but that won't live next to this component. So what I'm thinking is pulling this out so that the remainder of this stuff can be, this is all flexible, like how we want the, comp the modal to render. But like this stuff's always going to stay the same, right? So we're going to be able to pass this in there and then the content or the form inside that actually gets rendered. So this thing is what we want to pass in as the body. So to do that, let's create a component and let's see if we can do it this way. So we're going to go here, we're going to generate a new component and it's going to just be called the sidebar modal because it's on the side, sidebar modal. And we're going to sidecar that, yes. Now... To do that, we're going to go into, let's just clean this up. Here's our sidebar modal component. So we're going to grab that. We're going to grab all of this stuff here that we've just done. We're going to paste it in here. Now this form piece here, we're going to go form goes here, right? And then what we're going to do is we're going to render the title. So that's the clothes. And then here's the new, this is the title here, right? So that's going to go there and then we're going to chuck that there. And then this is going to be the title of the modal. So this will we'll just render out here title. Okay. So now we've got the sidebar modal component. So now instead of doing this in the new screen here, what we're going to do is we're just going to render out a component, right? So we're just going to do this and we're going to go end. And this will now be called sidebar modal component. And we're going to have a title. And this will be new idea. Right. And then in here, this is where we're going to render our form. Right. So if we just have a look here, I'll just grab something from here. If we go new, we just grab this form here. And we're just going to render out a new form. And we're going to say idea. Okay. Let's see if that still works. Uh, undefined method for turbo frame tag. That's fine. So that's just, I believe it's helpers dot. There we go. Form goes here. And then we're just missing our title. All right. So now what we've done is we pull that out into a component. All right. Just makes it a little bit easier to use. And if we don't have to keep every time we do a new one, we have to reuse the same logic and if we make changes to our modal we can just do it once okay so inside of the sidebar modal component here we're going to do an initialize so we're going to grab this chuck that in here and we're going to have for now we just got title and that's just nil i mean even just call this modal just like that because that if you haven't said it at least it shows up there we go, new idea. All right, so now we've just got our form that we need to wait on there. All right, and then we also got our controller, Hello Stimulus. Let's just have a look. That's probably not firing it because we didn't add the data there. But if we go into our sidebar modal, now we can add in. So this is the main div here. That's the backdrop. That's the section. And then I'm just going to pull this down here. 
All right. And then here we're going to say data controller. Now that's going to have a nice long name. We also have to remember just before we even go anywhere further to run this manifest update. And I'll quickly show you what happens. So if we open up this, you can see we've only got the one stimulus thing there. If we run this, we now have all of these here and we can see here's the controller name. So we need to do grab this and we're now going to say that's it there. There we go. Hello stimulus. All right. So we're now connected to our JavaScript and we can say for modal just to make sure that that's actually correct. I can see I've broken something here. I don't know what I've done. Where are you? Broken something. We need to fix that. That's probably why this is all gone funny. Let me just fix that. All right. So I've noticed a really strange bug and it is documented in the view components. But if you hit new, you can see down the bottom here, it spits out all this. If you check out the return, you can see why, because it's escaping all the HTML um, tags, which we don't want. So the fix to do that is if we just change this to tag .turbo frame ID colon and then the, the name of the modal. If we refresh now, hit new, you can see it works and you can see all the HTML is coming through properly. All right, so that's great. And I can add this back in here. Now the form should show up as well. There's the form. Let's just have a look. Form goes here. So we need to just actually render the form out. And this will actually just be content. Right. So we should have our form inside there. There you go. You can see them. We just don't have anything there to show our form yet. But it should be there somewhere, I believe section so let's have a look inside that turbo frame div section overflow fixed as we drill deep there's the form there's the form the input and the submit button right there all right so that's all there now cool that got me stumped for a little bit now we can continue. So inside of this, we've got this, we've already got our little connected thing saying hello. So we've got that working. Now what we want to see is when we click on the post button, we should see that log in the console, right? So we do see that. So if I refresh the page, hit new, you can see it there. So we're good. All right. Now we need to create a target for the animation classes. All right, so where do we want to apply that to? Let's have a look. Okay, so we can see here, we've created a remove target here called element. And so we've got two, looks like we've got two controllers. We've got slide over and remove. So I'm wondering why we have remove there. All right, so let's just copy this for now. So we're gonna go here. I'm going to drop in the remove target here and then we've got remove. So we've got the slide over and then we've got the remove here. All right. And that looks all good. I think the remove is for this, the action here. Okay. Now inside of our stimulus controller, we're going to have this. I'm going to drop change this out and we're going to have the slide over target. So let's just find that slide over which is now called modal modal target. All right. So let's see if this works. Not yet. So we just need to make sure we actually registering this target. All right. So that's there. And then we're just going to, I'm just going to copy this slide out. All right. Now, we need to update this as well. It's not called slide over. Let's see if we can find slide. That's slide out. So that triggers modal slide out. And then we've got 
I wonder if we... No, we actually have to use this entire thing here. So wherever we use this, because that's the controller we want to hit. All right, so let's see that. It's not working yet. Let me have a play. All right, so the target we need to add is to this guy here, because this is the actual content. So we'll add that in. It says data slide over target. I'm interested to know how we're going to write that into this. So first things first, we're going to change it to modal. And then I believe we have to change this to that. And let's see if this works. Nope. It's going to be the naming here, right? So this, I need to just make sure that we actually get this. Correct. That's the controller. And that's the controller's target modal there and then let's just check that we got the targets modal all right so i'm going to do a little bit of debugging and i'll get back to you so i think it could be hidden in here i think it's this div id posts possibly or maybe the width here something isn't right because it's not sitting in the right spot the actual modal is not sitting in the right spot this is outside of it though so i'm just trying to understand so if we get rid of like if we just don't even add this in, technically we don't want the modal to show at all, but it is. So we just need to just see why that is actually happening. All right, so I'm just debugging here and you can see I'm logging out this dot modal target. So if we go here and we click that, you can see that it is there. That's it right there. So I think we just got the wrong um, uh, classes on it. So we just have to make sure, see, so the, this is, they've changed the style here. We just need to update that. Okay. And I think we just have to, I have to go through here and just make sure I've got everything set correctly. Cause I feel like something is not right. Cause that is, you can see there, it's got translate X full. So it is actually appending that class name. So if you have a look here, it's adding that there. So something here is, we just need to fix this up. Okay, so you can see when I add this translate X full, it actually doesn't show at all. All right, so it is doing its thing. It's hiding itself. Right, so we can't see it. But then for some reason, you can see it's kind of off the screen there. It like flashes. So that is being added. But now we just have to make sure. So that's... We're adding to the modal target. We're adding a class. And let's just see why. There we go. Okay, so that the first time's now working. I have a feeling it's got to do with this not compiling. Tailwind's not compiling these classes. I think that's what's going on. Doesn't know what translate x full is. So now we just need to be able to get it back. So slide out. So let's go have a look at this now. So where do we call slide out? So we just need to make sure that we have this guy. That's right. Slide out. I'm going to remove this for now. So to, it, for some reason, we can click it once, but then this button's being disabled. All right, so let's have a look at what's going on there. Okay, so what's happening is we've got this um, this whole overlay that's sitting there and it's blocking everything. And that's why we can't actually click again to do anything there. All right, so we have to look at that remove piece. All right, found it. So luckily he published his source, but I can see here he's actually got a remove controller, right? So realistically, what I think what I want to do here is actually just add this method to this guy and then we can just go and remove it from here we don't have to have a separate controller right um what are the values here it's got values let's see if what that's using uh add remove animate targets element so what we're going to say here is just targets modal. 
So wherever we have the word element, do that. And then what we're going to go here is data remove target. We don't need that. We don't need a separate controller. Don't need that. So this is a, so we've got our target here, right? So we're setting that there. So that's the target. And then this is going to be, I'm going to add that there. And I'm going to say, this is going to be modal root, right? So we're going to have modal, modal root and modal. And then here we're going to say for all, these are going to be called modal root, modal root targets. Okay. So that's that. And then we just got to see here, we're going to call slide out, but also we're going to call. So we just grab that. So we're going to call remove and we're going to call slide out. Let us see if this works. Not yet. Let's just see if this is being called. So we're going to console.log called remove. Called remove area invoking action. Here we go. Cannot read the properties of each. So it's this modal root targets. So let's just see what that is. So if we just go here, um, console.log. And I just want to go um, this dot modal root targets. When we launch, undefined. Okay, so we need to just fix that and see why that's happening. So this is here, modal, ah, okay. Oh no, that's modal root. Cyber component modal root. Now I have a feeling we might have to do this. There we go. Okay, now we got it. Okay. There we go. Perfect. All right, we got that modal modal working now. So I had the naming convention wrong here. You have to use uh, camel, camel or Pascal case, whatever that one's called. All right, so we're making it. Here we go. We got this good, good, good. Bang, bang. That's looking great. All right, all right, we're on. We are on. Let's go here. New idea, new idea. We need to render the title. So let's render this. Okay. New idea, perfect. And then we're rendering the form. So the form is now rendered. So let's just have a look. Let's close off you, close off you, close off you and close you. And then we just open up our form. All right, here we go. So now we can, now we can actually render our form. Okay, so I've just dropped in a text area here. We're also going to drop in a text field. So this is title and description. Don't need a placeholder on either one of these. All right. Now if we refresh this guy, chuck it in. Here we go. All right, so we're looking pretty cool. All right, so I've just chucked in a label as well now. You can see it here, but what we do need in our modal, and now that we've got our sidebar modal as a view here, we can actually probably put some padding on this whole thing. So we just want to work out where exactly we are. So that's the title. So this, this here is the whole container. This here is the header and there's the content. All right. So in here, we're going to go flex, flex, col, and we're going to say uh, gap for. So that's not going to re-render because it is nested. Um, we want padding as well. Let's go P8. That's too much. P4 probably. There we go. That's a bit better. So now we have our title and a thing, and at 100% looks like that. 
All right. And what we also want to do is we can now like set, we want to probably set the background colors, right? So of these things. So we'll, I'll go ahead and do that. And I just want to see what's going on here. So this is the heading PY6 PX4. So I think this could be creating an issue for us. Yep. Because it's rendering it in a small window, it thinks it's different. So now we've got a new idea, title description. That's looking cool. Awesome. All right, so that's setting up the modal. I think I'm going to leave it at that. Otherwise, this video is going to blow it. In the next one, we'll actually go and commit that and then render it back in here. All right, catch you on the next one.